thus far when we've been drawing Lewis structures, we've said that the atoms mostly want to have eight electrons around them. Now what we're going to talk about is the possibility of having more than eight, and this is called expanded valence shell bonding. Elements in groups 13 through 18, so this is our P block all the way to the right on the periodic table, with N greater than 2. So when we look at the P block, the very top row is N equals 2. So those tend to very much follow the octet rule. We drop down one, we get to N is equal to 3. And below that, in the P block, those elements have the possibility of having this expanded valence shell bonding. You will find they can still bond to have an octet, but they have the possibility of having more than eight electrons and up to a maximum of 12 electrons. And this is due to the presence of a D subshell, so you will understand this better when we talk about bonding. But when N is equal to two, we don't really have the presence of D orbitals for bonding and because of that, they must follow the octet rule. So when we draw the Lewis structure of an expanded valence electron element, what we do is we can use lone pair electrons as if they are two unpaired electrons. Thus far, when we have converted Lewis symbols into Lewis structures, we've only bonded with unpaired electrons. The electrons that were in lone pair electrons, we did not use. In expanded valence shell bonding, lone pair electrons can be used in bonding. And what's important is, is if you use one of these electrons, you have to use the other one. So lone pair electrons can be used as if they are two unpaired electrons. So here's an example. We're gonna be looking at the Lewis structures for three different forms of sulfur. In this first one, SF2, so sulfur is in N equals three in our P block, so it has the ability to have expanded valence. When we wanna draw this out, we still do the same thing, the same steps with the Lewis structures. The only difference is, is we have the ability to use our lone pair electrons now, and you will see how we use that here in just a second. I still start with the Lewis symbol of each of my elements. So we have two fluorines. Each of those have seven valence. And here we have one sulfur, which has six valence. And in this case, each one of our fluorines has one unpaired electron, our sulfur has two unpaired electrons, so we can fulfill our octets, and we can get rid of all of our unpaired electrons simply by using the standard connections that we have done before. We, we connect the unpaired electrons, we turn them into individual bonds, and so this is the Lewis structure for SF2. And you can see in this case, sulfur has two, four, six, eight electrons around it. So even though sulfur has the ability to have expanded valence, most of the time it still wants to have an octet. And we did not have to do expanded valence because we were able to get rid of all of our unpaired electrons without using lone pair electrons as part of the expanded octet. So here when we look at SF4, we now have four fluorines, each with an unpaired electron, and we have a sulfur with two. So you can see with the regular bonding, we do not have enough unpaired electrons to satisfy or get rid of all the unpaired electrons inside of this molecule. Here, if we use each unpaired electron on sulfur with one of the unpaired electrons on the fluorine, we can get rid of one and then two and turn those into bonds but we still have unpaired electrons on these last two fluorines, and we cannot have unpaired electrons inside of our Lewis structure. At this point, then we can use expanded valence, and we know we can do this because sulfur is got an N value of greater than two in the P block, and this means that we can use a lone pair electrons just like we use these unpaired electrons. So we connect an electron from the lone pair electron to an electron, we can connect an electron from the lone pair electron to an unpaired electron inside of fluorine. But remember, if I use one, I have to use the other one. So here we connect these electrons, those turn into bonds, and we see the structure for SF4. And really when drawing out these Lewis structures, what's the important part and what tells you that you've done it correctly is the number of bonds and number of lone pair electrons that we have on the central atom. So in this case, SF4 has four bonds and one set of lone pair electrons. 
So it's a very common mistake that I've seen where people use one electron from one lone pair and another electron from a different lone pair, and it looks something like this. So they use the unpaired electrons on the sulfur, they connect it, and then what they use is they use one electron from one set of lone pair electrons and connect with an unpaired electron, and then they use another electron from a different pair of lone pair electrons. And their answer tends to end up like this, where it actually has two unpaired electrons in there. And so we know that this is wrong. Our structure should not have unpaired electrons. So the rule is, like we've seen up here, if I use one electron as part of expanded valence, I have to use the other one also. So here we do the same thing with SF6. Now we have six fluorines, and when we look at it, sulfur only has six valence electrons. So to get rid of all the unpaired electrons on the fluorines, every electron inside of sulfur is going to have to connect with a unpaired electron on fluorine. So the two unpaired electrons get used, and then the two sets of lone pair electrons get used, get rid of the unpaired electrons on two fluorines. So these two connect, these two connect, these two connect, and these two connect. And when we're done, all of the valence electrons for sulfur have gone into bonding. So there's six bonds and no lone pair electrons. And this is an extreme case that this sulfur actually has two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve electrons around it. So that's another thing that you can use to check is that's the most electrons that an individual element can have around it. So we've reached the limit here in sulfur having 12 electrons around it. So if you go beyond that, you have done something wrong. So in the final examples of Lewis structures, probably the most complex is when you can bind expanded valence and charges. So the, the rules still apply, just like what we've been doing. So let's look at two more, XEF2. And with expanded valence, we can see that, in fact, some noble gases can react. It's very rare, but the idea is when we use xenon here, it has eight valence electrons, so it has no unpaired electrons. So the only way that we can get bonding with xenon is by using expanded valence. If we react it with two fluorines, the fluorines each have an unpaired electron. In order to counteract these unpaired electrons, we need to use a pair of lone pair electrons. So if we use one, we use the other one. And it's this expanded valence that allows us to get some reactivity out of noble gases because noble gases actually have no unpaired electrons. So this is the Lewis structure of XEF2. IF4 minus, we can kind of combine the two ideas of expanded valence and charges. Here, even though fluorine is the most electronegative, the actual negative charge is going to go on the central atom here, iodine. And if you tried it, uh, you can't put a negative charge on fluorine itself and draw a proper Lewis structure. When we have a negative charge, we would like to put it on the most electronegative element, but sometimes the charges go on the central atom also. So our central atom is iodine. It has seven valence electrons. We want to give it a negative charge, so we add an electron to it. That gives it eight valence electrons. So it actually has a configuration very similar to noble gas, so very much like what we did with xenon. Our I minus now has no unpaired electrons. So the only bonding that we can get is through expanded valence. So when we've reacted it with four fluorines, each of these fluorines have an unpaired electron. So the only interaction between electrons is through expanded valence. So here we're using a pair of lone pair electrons to connect with the two unpaired electrons on these fluorines. We do the same thing on the other side. And so two sets of lone pair electrons on our central iodine get used for bonding with fluorine. So when we're done, our central iodine actually has four bonds and two sets of lone pair electrons and a negative charge. So we are only able to get I minus to react through the use of expanded valence.